Hey everyone, um, thanks so much for coming to join me tonight to um, talk about music education. Uh, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas obviously here on Facebook. If you're watching on uh, Instagram Live, you can obviously watch me on Instagram. Um, I'm also on Pinterest and Twitter and a variety of other places. Um, all you have to do is search for my name, David Rao, or uh, Make Moments Matter Music Ed and you should be able to find me. Um, just a quick recap, if you watched last week, um, last week's Musical Monday video, and um, if you did, thank you. But if you watched last week, I did a couple things. I talked about um, three of my favorite books to use for movement exploration. Um, and I just wanted to tell you that I took those books and I added like three more and I turned it into a blog post. So if you go to my blog, which is makemomentsmatter.org and you click on the blog, um, there's a tab that says blog, um, it should be the most recent blog post. So if you want six special books to use for music uh, movement exploration in your classroom, um, I talk about the three from last week plus three more that I really love. Um, and on that blog post, I, I tried to put like pictures from inside the book and some ideas about lesson plans so that it's not just like, oh, there's this book, but also just you could see a little bit inside and see why I like it. I tried to share all of that on my blog post and that's at makemomentsmatter.org and you can click the blog tab to find the most recent blog post, books about movement exploration. Um, also last week, um, I talked about um, my rhythm sort activity that I'm doing with third grade. Um, and I talked a little bit about how we take these cards, let's see if you can see them, take these cards and um, put them in different orders, use them for composing and arranging and all sorts of stuff. Along with that, um, I talked about a poem that I use called Everything Stew. It was just a silly poem I made up and how I sort of incorporated that into my lesson. Um, and a lot of folks were, were asking, you know, where can they get the poem? So if you go to the show notes for these videos, um, which is easy to find if you know where to go. On my website, makemomentsmatter.org slash videos, um, there's a little tab that says Musical Monday Recap, or if you're watching on Facebook Live, there's actually a link in the, um, com not comments, in the caption, the very bottom um, to the Musical Monday Recap. And on that page under week seven, um, I put a free downloadable PDF of the poem, the actual visuals that I use, um, and all the stuff that sort of goes along with that. So if you're like, this is cool, I wanna try this out, but I'd like to use that poem because that ties things together. It's there for you if you want it. So that is um, on makemomentsmatter.org slash videos and the Musical Monday recap. And on that page, um, if you're like, I like that idea, but I wanna come back to it in like three months. <laughs> Um, on that Musical Monday recap page, I tried to put pinnable images. So if you want to pin it to Pinterest, you can. Um, so there's th that if, if you're interested in that. Um, one more thing, talking about books and um, songs. Um, this last week I did a, podca or a podcast episode um, and I just put it out there that a few days ago. In that podcast, I talk about um, another one of my favorite finger play songs for um, kindergarten and first grade. Um, in this video, or in this podcast, I talk about Open Shut Them. In the previous podcast, I talked about Little Bunny Foo Foo. There's some more finger plays to come. But um, if you're interested, um, that's in my newest podcast. And I also share about one more, <laughs> one more book that I love. On Instagram, I'm talking a lot about books. I have lots of pictures. And if you follow my Instagram feed at all, you know I've got lots and lots of books. Um, about like books I love for movement and books I love for songs and whatever. Um, but I have another book that I share about in my podcast episode and it's this adorable book called, well, it looks backward, Wendell the Narwhal. Wendell ends up being a conductor. It is maybe the cutest of all cute books and I immediately bought it for my nephew and I bought a copy for me um, and he helps basically conduct the entire ocean and oh, isn't that adorable? Cause they're making all these sounds and he wants it to be quiet. So he taps his horn. Oh my gosh, it's the cutest. I talk about it in my podcast episode. Um, and so if you go if you go there, um, you can hear all about it and how I'm using it and, and how great I think it is. But that's in my most recent podcast. You can find my podcasts um, in Apple Podcasts or SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn, and now on Google Play or Spotify. So if you listen there, you can, you can do that. Um, all of those things are on uh, my website, makemomentsmatter.org slash podcast. You can read a recap of all of those. Okay, so enough talking about recapping stuff. I'm ready to move on and tell you just a little bit about um, my lessons for the week. I'm gonna talk specifically about kindergarten. Um, usually in these PD videos, um, I do a recap of my K through five lessons. For the past two weeks, 
I've been running the same lessons. Um, it's crazy because um, a couple weeks ago, I had students from a college nearby come out and observe my classroom because they're doing, you know, elementary methods and they have to have like 20 hours or whatever in a classroom. So they came to watch. Um, and so they saw my like first three or whatever classes. Um, one of the students emailed me the following day and was like, hey, I'd love to get more hours in your classroom. Can I come back and watch again? And I was like, sure, but I'm teaching the same lessons because I'm on an eight day schedule. Um, and so he emailed me just two days ago and he was like, hey, can I come observe again? Yes, but I'm teaching the same lessons. So it's really weird, but with, with my, we had a fall break week and with, uh, we had a, a track meet day and all sorts of stuff. I'm still teaching the same K-5 lessons that I talked about in week six of these videos. So I'm not gonna bore you going through a recap of all of that again, but instead I thought um, before I talk about kindergarten, I would just share two um, really fun things, a favorite instrument of mine that I use with a lot of different grades and also a favorite book that I think that you all should um, invest in or look at or consider if you don't already have it. Or if you already have it, you should look at it again. Um, so the instrument I wanted to share is this one. It's called a stir xylophone or a stirring xylophone. I don't know, maybe, a, maybe there's another word for it. Sometimes they come with a handle and sometimes they don't. Um, so if they don't have a handle, it's just this piece and up. But I love it because it has such a fun and unique sound. It usually comes with a mallet. It's just a, a really cool sound. I don't know if that translated into the live videos at all, but it's a super cool sound and kids immediately stop what they're doing to listen. I love using this for centers because if kids are working in centers, a lot of times they are very engrossed in what they're doing. And this is such a unique sound that they stop. So if I need to give instructions, I might do that really quick to get their attention again. It's not an abrasive sound. And it's not an overwhelming sound. It's just a unique sound. And so kids sort of immediately stop and listen. Some brands also, because it's a stirring xylophone, some actually come with a spoon. <laughs> and so um, if, if you get the spoon, you can actually stir it with a spoon. This is great because you know, last week I was talking about using food words to compose. Well, when, when they're all working in their small groups and their centers, using the stirring sort of matches with the stew and matches with food. And so they think that that's really fun. But this stirring xylophone is really great. Um, and I love using it with all grades as a, for sound stories, but as an attention getter too, because it is unique and interesting, but not grading. Um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about today was a book that I really love. Um, and actually I have two books because I forgot to talk about this one a minute ago. I'm, I'm talking about on my podcast, um, the last couple episodes have been about finger play songs. Um, and finger plays are just songs where your hands act out the story. Um, and there's this really great book that I meant to talk about like five minutes ago called, uh, I know it's backwards, but um, I Winker, Tom Tinker, Chin Chopper by Tom Glazer. Glazer? I'm not sure how to say his last name. Um, but it has some really, really, really great songs in it and poems in it. Um, it has 50 different songs and poems that you can use as finger plays. Um, so like all of the things that you would normally know, um, maybe like Jenny Jenkins. I know a lot of people use this as a game and use it um, as a, a singing story or things like that. But this one actually details like how you could use um, use it as a finger play, how you can incorporate that, your hands are, um, have kids sort of act that out. Um, there are all the, the finger plays you probably already know and a lot that you don't. So this I have linked in the video notes. Um, it's not actually in print right now, I don't think, um, which is why I couldn't find it on the West Music website. I couldn't find it on Amazon. <gasps> Gasp, not on Amazon. Um, but I, I did, <laughs> when I was on Amazon, I found links to like a third party seller. So actually, instead of paying like $15, I found like two or three that are listed for like $1.99 or like $2.99. So might be worth looking into. But the one book I really wanted to talk about um, that I use every year and I think is a really amazing resource, if you don't already have it, is this book, um, As American as Apple Pie. Um, this is by um, the two men who wrote the Game Plan curriculum series. So if you know Game Plan, if you use Game Plan in your classroom, it's sort of an ORF-based um, curriculum. Um, if you use that, this is by the same people. Um, I, I know them as Jeff and Randy, but I think it's Jeff Kriske and Randy DeLellis. I don't think I'm saying his name right either. I'm really sorry, Randy. Um, but um, Jeff and Randy are amazing. And so in the book, this book has like 
all of the, like the world's best lessons. So like if I'm looking through here, like <clears throat> John Kanakanaka and Tidio and Little Liza Jane and uh, the Farmer's Dairy Key and Ezekiel Saw the Wheel, Follow the Drinking Gourd, um, Frog Wanna Corton, Shake Those Simmons Down, all these like really like if I if I have an administrator coming or if like I really need to get a class on task, I use my like, you know, diamond lessons with songs that I know kids always love. This book is full of that. And not only that, but also it has, so like it has the song, usually it has an ORF arrangement. So if you're like not exactly sure how to incorporate ORF instruments, um, this is a great place to start. It has a lot of those things on there. Um, it also a lot of times will have body percussion, some sort of interactive game. Um, sometimes it'll have like a, a rhythm notation or reading or extension activity. Um, and it just has a, like uh, the objectives and level and things on there that really help you out. This book is so good and it is not that expensive. Um, I, I think I put a link in the video notes to the West Music website where you can get it. Um, you can only get it in a couple places, West Music and also from their website, I believe directly you can get it. But if you don't own anything else by Jeff and Randy, if you do own Game Plan, probably a lot of these things are in there, but if you don't own anything else by Jeff and Randy, this is where I would start. This is like golden nugget book. I use it all the time. Um, and like I said, if I have like an administrator coming and I need something that I know kids are gonna love and a process that's gonna work, I go to this. So um, my, my two, well, I guess three recommendations to start this video, the Stir Xylophone, cause it's so cool and makes such a fun sound. I'll just do it one more time. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, okay, and then, um, I Winker, Tom Tinker, Chin Chopper, I'll try and, uh, I, I think I put a link to that in the video notes, but um, I'll, I'll try and see if it's anywhere else in print and I'll add that if I can. And then also, As American as Apple Pie by Jeff and Randy, totally worth your however much money <laughs> they're asking for. It. So good. Okay, so um, those are my sort of ideas to share in place of my lesson plans, because I've already sort of talked about those. Um, but now I wanna share with you my kindergarten lesson plans. Um, I know a lot of people struggle with younger grades. I love kindergarten. Like, I really love kindergarten. So it's a fun thing for me to teach. Um, it's my first class after lunch. So like, they're sort of, they're still sort of in their food coma when they come to me. Um, and I just love hanging out with kindergarten. So um, I'm going to tell you sort of how I do things and, and share some of the, the resources and things that I use. Um, several weeks ago when I talked about kindergarten, I talked about my opening song, which was the... Um, the Choo Choo Train song. I love that song um, and it progresses as students come. I'm still currently in rotation four with kids. On Wednesday, I start rotation five. I've been in school since August 1st. But um, I'm in rotation four. So the first time kids come, we do um, the Choo Choo Train song and we just sort of circle around our big carpet. And the next time um, I sort of lead them in, I do the Choo Choo Train song. We circle around, we take sort of a bigger circle, but we end up around our big carpet, which is where our, the circle is. Um, in the song, it goes, choo-choo train, choo-choo train, copy me, just do the same, choo-choo train, choo-choo train, woo-woo, stop. And they get to do train whistles. The woo-woo is their version of the train whistle, and they love that, like they love it. So in week three, I secretly have hidden in my sleeve or in my pocket, I have a train whistle. <laughs> And so as we're going along about the third or fourth time doing that little song, I go, copy me and do the same, choo-choo train, choo-choo train, <laughs> stop. And I look at them all surprised. I'm like, oh my goodness, you sounded so realistic. How did you do that? And they're like, because I've hidden the, the whistle again. So then I was like, oh, do that again. And so of course I play again. By this time, many of them are like caught on. <laughs> And so then the final time I play it and then I show them like, you know, I've got a whistle, right? Okay. So in this lesson, I tell them, this is the fourth time I've seen them. And this time I tell them, you know, I tried to trick you last time with the train whistle. I'm not going to trick you. I'll just tell you I'm using the whistle this time. So, um, you know, it's coming. You still get to sing. You still get to do your parts, but I'm going to use the whistle and you can do your whistle sound too. This time though, I say, but you've got to watch me because I'm the engine. I'm the beginning of the train. I know where the tracks are. Do you know where the tracks are? And they're like, no, I know where the tracks are. And this time we're going to take a different route. So you got to follow me very closely on these tracks. 
So this time, instead of just doing a circle around the carpet, I actually take them in sort of a weird track around the room. We sort of follow like the perimeter of the room. We go back like behind the table that kids are not allowed to go behind, but I'm like, oh no, you're behind the table. Oh, well the engine led you there, so I guess this time it's okay. And I just sort of lead them around. It, it's a chance for them to see the room and sort of explore by looking through the room while they're singing and actually actively engaged. So I'm all about it. I'm, I'm excited for them to see different things. We do eventually end up around the circle again, and that's where the song ends. And then we go right into engine engine number nine, which we've been doing for several weeks now. This time at this point, um, we're at the point where we, where we say the poem engine, engine number nine, going down Chicago line. We have these little actions. We do the, the engine engine number nine, and then I've added a B section where I just have them go choo, choo, choo. In the last week, I had them move their feet to the ch -ch -ch. So I'm sort of encouraging a steady beat in their feet, although I didn't explicitly say those words, but I'm encouraging that as we go. So we're doing ch -ch 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 -ch, and then I go ready and stop. And then we go back to engine, engine number nine, going. Down. So we sort of have, a, have an ABA setup going. Um, since we have the whistle, I said, you know what? I think I could just give you a signal on the whistle when it's time to stop the choo choo sound. So when we go choo 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 choo, listen carefully, because instead of going ready, stop, I'm gonna go and then we'll just go back to our poem, engine, engine number nine. So I've taken out my verbal prompt now, and then we do our ABA, which is the engine, engine number nine, and then the B part is choo 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 for as long as I want, and then tells them that it's time to go back to the poem. The final thing I add to that is, instead of just standing and doing a steady beat with our feet, we actually move around our big circle carpet and we move our feet to the steady beat as we're doing the choo choo choo. And again, I don't say the word steady beat at this point, but I do point at kids and I say, oh, I love how your feet are matching the beat, watch her. Or I'll say, oh my gosh, Jeremy's feet are matching the beat, watch his feet. Choo and he shows them. And so I'm basically just encouraging the city beat even though I'm not naming it. So the final work of that in our week four is that A is the poem, engine, engine number nine. B is the ch -ch -ch sounds with feet moving around our big circle with a nonverbal <laughs> that tell kids it's time to stop. And then we go back to our poem. And they love that. We, do, we probably go A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A. Like they love it. They would, they would do that for the rest of the class if they could. But um, eventually we stop and I have kids sit down and I say, you know, last week you were here, um, instead of just using my train whistle, I had another whistle. Do you remember the whistle I had? And they're like, yeah, it was the sliding one. Yes, I had this whistle too. And now my slide whistle does this on purpose. So I know this is gonna happen. I say, I want you to look at both whistles and I want you to see if you can tell me the difference because they're not exactly the same. So my whistles, I've got this one, which is made out of wood, and this one, which is made out of metal. And usually at this point, the whistle is, the slide whistle is starting to do this. I, maybe the humidity in my house doesn't let it do it, but it slides out on its own. Obviously it's not doing it for right now, <laughs> I want it to. But it slides out on its own, and so kids are like giggling about how it's sliding out. And I say, um, well, I want you to spot the two differences. And so they say, this one's made out of wood, and this one's made out of metal. We talk about the shape and the size. We talk about this one has a slide, and this one does not. And then I say, do you think they're gonna sound the same? Do you think this is gonna sound exactly like that? And they're like, well, no, because it doesn't look the same, doesn't have the same properties. Um, and that, I think, is important. It's a critical thinking thing to have them go through that process, but also ha um, has them talk about um, contrast, which is something we do a lot, fast and slow, high and low, you know, so all, all of those things. So this is a great physical representation of that, two different whistles. So um, then I put down my train whistle and I pick up my slide whistle and I say, remember that the slide whistle can go from high to low or it can go from low to high. And last time, if you remember, you took your finger and you turned it into a musical paintbrush. And when the sound went up, your paintbrush went up. And when the sound went down, your paintbrush went down. I'm gonna play on my whistle and I want you to echo me with your paintbrush. So if the sound goes down, you move your hand down and you go, ooh, with your voice. And if the sound goes up, you move your paintbrush up and you go, ooh, with your voice, but you have to match. And then I do several different examples. I do something like, ooh, ooh, or, ooh, ooh, and 
and kids do that. And then I go to more exciting things. Slowly, I gradually get them into something like this. And they do, you know, and then I really love doing this. And they go, and they do their thing. They do their thing. They do their thing. Which is the the farthest I can go and they love that one they think that one's really fun but it's fun actually giving them some sort of more complex things to have them try and match um, but I always start really simple just and then I do and at this point we're sitting and I love Linda um, just mentioned that she says kid have kids K and one do their whole bodies and that's sort of my in my next lesson instead of just sitting and doing with their finger they're gonna stand up and do the paintbrush all the way up and down because I'll say something in the next lesson about like you know this sound it seems like it's going from much lower to much higher than just this so maybe you could draw that with your whole body and that's what we do in the next lesson thanks Linda for saying that so we do our slide whistle and then I have to do um, my my attendance, so for my attendance for kids, I do, um, where are my kindergartners? They go, here we are, there you are. Where are my kindergarten girls? Here we are, there you are. And so then it, it turns into, where is Eric? And he'll go, here I am, there you are. Where is Jennifer? Here I am, there you are. Where is Aiden or whatever? And I go around um, the group doing that. I'm not asking them to sing it back yet. That's sort of what we're getting to in this lesson is the singing voice. And again, this is my week four with kids, even though you know, I've been in school since August 1st, this is my week four with them. So I don't want to push them into it quite so much. And so um, I just let them answer with their spoken, here I am, because honestly for me, that's great. If they're responding to me, that's good. There's, you know, there are those kids who are still not quite comfortable with that or doing it on their own. So if they're responding, great. And if they just raise their hand, I say, there you are. So um, I do that attendance. We go back and forth and go all the way around the circle. And at the very end, I say, uh, so I did, you know, like, where is Lindsay? Here I am. There you are. Where is you know, whoever, I got went all the way around. Once I know I'm done, because on my iPad, I know who the last name is. I go, where is Thumpkin? And they're like, what? <laughs> Where is Thumpkin? And I put the iPad down. And usually a kid's like, here I am. <laughs> there you are. And that leads right into Where is Thumpkin? This is maybe our second or third time doing this. So we go through Where is Thumpkin? If you don't know that one, um, it's a really awesome finger play song. Um, it may or may not be showing up in my next podcast episode. But one of the things that I do with it, since this is not the first time we've done this, um, what I do with this is I do something a little bit different. Again, it's sort of to get kids to like pay attention to what's happening and what's right and what's not. So like what they what they remember from last time versus what they're seeing now. So for example, the first time we do, where is Thumpkin, where is Thumpkin? And we just do that normally. So once, once we, you know, like, where is Thumpkin from my attendance? And they go, here I am. Oh, there you are. And then we, we go through what we're going to actually say in Thumpkin. So we say, oh, can you have your Thumpkin wave at your other Thumpkin? Great. Okay. And then you say, uh, you know, can I have them be very polite and say, how are you today, sir? And then they repeat. And then he says very politely, very well, thank you. And they repeat, very well, thank you. Oh, great. Oh, great. Awesome. And they talk back and forth for like, you know, three seconds. And they say, now run away and run away. And so then we do the first version, uh, the first verse, just normal. Where is Thumpkin? Where is Thumpkin? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, thank you. Run away, run away. Now, with kids, I like to, before we actually sing it, have them do the actions out of time. So how are you today, sir? Because that's weird language for kids. Uh, and that's, you know, the, the first part of the song is so easy because they just copy what you're doing but once they get to how are you today sir very well thank you that's not a chance for them to just echo that's conversation so to have them do that before you actually sing it i think is helpful and then we sing through the thumbkin the way and then i say okay now hold up your five finger friends and point to the first one this is thumbkin and what i what i've learned with kids is that i need to do it like this and show them this part of my hand and also turn it around and show them this part of my hand because some kids, they can just look at this and they get it, and some kids need to see the back of your hand. It's a silly thing, but it, it's it's true of my kids that they need to be able to see both. So I, I sort of 
will turn my hand or maybe I'll do, yeah, see thumbkin or maybe on this one, I'll show them the other one, but I think it's good for them to see both sides. So I say thumbkin is our first friend. What's the name of the next friend on the next finger? And they go, oh, it's pointer. Great. Well, since we're going through our friends, who's the next one? Tall man. Okay. And then ring man. Right. And you remember, okay, then pinky. Right. Great. So we just sort of preview what's, what's coming down the line. Right. Um, and I say, so the next one who we're going to sing about is, and they say pointer. I'm like, yeah, pointer. Okay. Make him run away, run away. Great. So we're going to sing, where is Pointer? So this time I go, where is Pointer? Where is Pointer? Here I am. Here I am. Wait a minute. You're not Pointer. You're a thumpkin. Hee 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 hee. I'm tricking you. So that's, that's my like to see if they'll get it right away. Because usually they see this and they're like, wait. Hold on. And so then um, and then I have them put away their thumbkin. I say, oh, let's try that again. Where is pointer? Where is pointer? Here I am. Here I am. And then they go through the whole thing and then they run away. Great. So we pull out our hand again. Oh, great. So we've got thumbkin. We've got pointer. And who's the next one? Tall man. Right. And remember what we learned last time. And this will stop kids, hopefully, from doing this all around the room. <laughs> remember what we learned last time is that tall man... He loves his friends. He is such a friendly guy and he loves waving. Can you make him wave? Oh yes, but make your tall man wave at other tall man. Perfect, great. And remember he gets lonely when he has to stand by himself. So he doesn't like standing by himself. So instead of bringing him out by himself, you're gonna bring him out with all his finger friends and he'll wave. Uh, Linda, that's my way around how to get tall man to not stand by himself. And it usually works. And if you say something like, oh, if they're doing this, you say, oh, gotta open up your hand. And if you do that action, they get it. And so that sort of opens up them from flipping the bird all around your classroom. Because you know that's when your principal would walk in. So <laughs> that sort of helps get away from that. So then um, when we do tall man, we do where is tall man? Where is tall man? Here I am. Wait a minute. You're not tall man. He he he. I tricked you. And he runs away. <sighs> so we do tall man with the actual tall man. But I, I love bringing Thumpkin back because you know, it reinforces like, oh wait, no. Because again, they're comparing and contrasting, remembering what they remember from before with what is actually singing. And so it, I think it's good for them. So we do that. So then we do the same process for Ring Man. He also doesn't like to stand alone, not because, you know, like that's a bad thing, but because it's actually sort of hard to make that finger stand on its own. So um, he also waves and he also likes coming out with his finger friends. The other nice thing about doing that the same as the middle finger is that then they see that same process for two different fingers. And they don't think that you're just doing that for one because it's the bad finger or whatever. So doing that again, the same process again for Ring Man, I think is great. So this time when Ring Man comes out, guess who comes out? Thumbkin, right? Okay. So then he goes away. At the very end, so in between each verse, I, I, I bring my hand back out and I say, okay, so we've got Thumbkin. We've got Pointer. We've got Tall Man. We've got Ring Man. We've got Pinky. I do that each time. Thumbkin, Pointer, Tall Man, Ring Man, Pinky. And I do that every time to just reinforce. So on the last one I say, Pinky, oh good, show me Pinky. Pinky doesn't mind standing by himself, great. Okay, now, before you put Pinky away, bring Thumpkin back out. Thumpkin, we know what you're going to do. You've done it for the last three finger friends. Don't try and come out for Pinky. Hmm. Okay, so we do, where is Pinky? Where is Pinky, where is Pinky? Here I am. Here I am. Wait, is that Pinky? And kids are like, no. <laughs> and and Pointer goes, I learned that from Thumpkin. <laughs> and so kids think that that's really funny, but they also like that it's not Thumpkin again. But they, you know, they're comparing and contrasting. I think it's super fun, but it helps them remember. It also gives them like another chance to sing through every time. Where is Thumpkin? Where is? And then when the, the wrong finger is there or whatever, they have to restart. And I like being able to restart several times. It gives them a lot of uh, time through the song and reinforces what they need to do. So um, we go through all our finger friends. Um, we get done with the song. And then one of the things that I do with kids, um, uh, then we move out to a scattered position. We move um, through the room. I've got a little song that I do with them for that. Um, and we get to our scattered spots and we do um, Let Everyone Clap Hands Like Me. If you know that one, it's a really fun song. And I say, oh, great. But before I do the song, I, I say, great. Now I'm going to do something and I want you to do it just like me. And then they clap, clap. Great. Now do this just like me. I'll go first. 
and then they pat and then I go great just like me and they do just like me and I go great how about this and then they blink just like me and I say every time how many times did you do each thing and they think about it hmm and you know And they eventually say, you know, like, oh, two every time. Yes, two. Every time it's the same. Every time. And so I've got a little song. And you get to do exactly what I say two times each. Are you ready? And the song goes, let everyone clap hands like me. Let everyone clap hands like me. Come on and join into the game. You'll find that it's always the same. And so I do that a slowed down version the first time so that I can do the slower claps. Um, I, I used to do, come on and join into the game. But when I did that, they all started scooting towards me. <laughs> so I had to change the action to just a little windmill sort of action. Come on and join into the game. You'll find that it's always the same. And then I say, great. Oh, you did so good. Because they're clapping on the clapping parts, right? And now we're going to do something different. So we do it patting. And then we do it blinking. And then maybe we'll do it with a lip pop or something. In the next lesson, so the next time I see them when we do this song, I'm gonna ask for students to come up with something that we can do twice. The first time I don't. The first time I give them like four or five examples, I personally will do clapping and patting and then usually blinking because that's interesting and it's not doesn't make a sound. Maybe we'll do stomping if I'm feeling really adventurous. But in the next lesson, the next time I see them, I'll do one or two or three and then I'll say, hmm, we did patting and clapping and stomping. What else could we do? And I let them come up with a couple ideas because it's fun and, and they like it. So um, in each lesson, we've been meeting one of the uh, our puppet friends who teaches us about one of the voices. So the first week we met Peter the rabbit. He taught us about speaking voice. The next week we met Flitter the butterfly who taught us about whisper voice. And we met Roly Poly Rumbly Tumbly the caterpillar who now is in his cocoon, his chrysalis, and he's up on the board. And I, I give him a little story about, oh, he was out in the garden. He was eating so much. And one day he came and said, oh, I'm so full. And I want to take a nap. And he climbed up onto the board and took a nap. And the next morning, he wasn't there anymore, but I found this. And I hold it. It's that magical puppet I showed you two weeks ago that turns from a caterpillar into a chrysalis into a butterfly. And so I show them the chrysalis. And I say, I don't know exactly what this is, but it looks like it looks like a caterpillar sleeping bag. So I don't know, maybe he's inside. We'll have to use our whisper voice around it to be very quiet. And so that in, in the next lesson, he's going to come out of the chrysalis. And it's going to be amazing. And I can't wait to have their minds blown. Um, but anyway, that was that very special puppet that I had. So uh, that was a whisper voice because uh, cater the caterpillar liked the whisper. And when he comes out as a butterfly, he'll like the whisper voice again. My new friend um, is coming to tell us about the next voice. And so... Um, I, say, I go over and I say, here's my new friend. And she, she's up on a bookshelf, actually, when I, when I pick her up. And I say, this is my friend. Her name is Snowy. Snowy's an owl. And I'm going to ask her, see if she'll want to come and talk to you. And I say, Snowy, um, Snowy, do you want to come and see the kids? Ooh. These kids over here, the kindergartners, do you want to come and say hi to the kindergartners? Ooh. This kindergarten class, Miss Groom's class, I think it's Miss Groom's class, right? Yeah, Miss Groom's class. Would you like to come meet the kindergartners? Ooh. S Snowy, I'm pointing to them right here, Miss Groom's class. I told you the kindergartners. Would you like to come meet them? Ooh. Snowy, what do you mean, who? You keep saying who. I keep telling you. Mr. Rao, in owl language, who means yes. Who means yes? That's because owls say who, who. So she keeps saying yes, and I keep things. She Sorry. So are you ready to come meet the kids? Ooh. Snowy, these kids, Mr. Rao. Who means yes in our language? Right, I'm sorry. Forgot. And the kids think that's really hilarious. Okay, so, <laughs> so then Snowy flies over, and when she flies from the bookshelf to where she's going to sit and meet the kids, she does vocal glides. Ooh, 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 ooh. And so I fly her sort of around the room, and then eventually she sort of roosts on my hand. Um, but when I'm flying her around the room, she does vocal glides um, because I, I, I want to tie that into singing voice and I want kids to hear it. I want kids to see the action of going up and your voice going up and the, the puppet going down and your voice going down. 
So this is just a great way to connect that in. Um, by the way, this is a super, super cool puppet. It's the Snowy Owl puppet from obviously Folk Manus, my favorite puppets. Um, the one really cool, th well, a couple really cool things. So on her wings, there's actually Velcro. So when you have her just sitting like this, you can Velcro her wings together and they stay together. The other cool thing that you really can't see um, is that inside, there is a little joystick sort of a thing, which makes her head move. So kids sort of love that. And actually I've gotten a lot better at it over the years. So that now um, she doesn't just, you know, turn her head, she can also like look up or, you know, like look down or whatever. You can sort of manipulate it to do different things. So um, anyway, I love Snowy the Owl. So Snowy comes to tell them about um, herself and then about her favorite voice. So she says things like, Yes, um, so my name is Snowy, and I'm an owl, and um, owls usually sleep during the day, so I had to wake up to come and talk to you all, but I thought it'd be really great because I wanted to tell you about my favorite voice, my singing voice. Oh, your singing voice, that's wonderful. I heard you use it a second ago. She's like, right when I went, ooh, ooh, and she does a little flying again, and I say, you know what, I love using my singing voice, is there you know, have you heard singing voice recently? And she said, yes, I heard the kindergartners using their singing voices. Oh, really? When? I heard when, them, when they went, choo-choo train, choo-choo train, copy me, just do the same. Oh, that's right, that is her singing voice. Did you hear it any other time? Yes, when you went, let everyone flap wings like me, flap, flap. Let everyone flap wings like me. And she sort of sings through anything that we've done that day. She talks about the slide whistle. Um, she talks about um, where is Thumpkin? And she goes, where is Thumpkin? I don't know where is Thumpkin because I don't have any thumbs. So I don't know where, where did he go? And so she, um, she's fun. The kids like her, but she, I always sort of do it in, ooh, in the sort of a Julia Child or whatever voice. Um, and it's uh, sort of more of a sort of a sing, but it's not obviously. Um, so anyway, she then tells them about her favorite song and her favorite song goes like this. Singing voice is the best. It's better than all the rest. If, you, if you've read my blog post about using puppets for the four voices, um, each of the puppets does their version of this. Peter the rabbit says, speaking voice is the best. It's better than all the rest. And Flutter, the butterfly goes, whisper. And Snowy sings, singing voice is the best. It's better than all the rest. Next week when they meet Grizzly, the bear, he's going to shout it because he does his shouting voice. So um, Snowy sings that vo song to them. At this point, I'm sort of running out of time in the lesson. And so um, Snowy says, I have a special game that I want to try with each and every one of you. Here's what we're going to do. If we can get into our circle shape, I'll tell you about our special singing voice song. And so we get into a big circle. And Snowy says, okay, here's what's going to happen. I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna sing. Remember, owls go, who, who. That's just the sound we make, but who also means like, who, like who are you? And I have a song that goes like this. Who are you? And if I sing my special song to you, you get to sing your name to me. So then Snowy and I show the kids. So Snowy goes, I'll do it with Mr. Ralph. Watch this. I'm gonna sing my I'm gonna sing Who Are You? And he's gonna sing back, Mr. Ralph. He's gonna do it with his singing voice. Are you ready? Okay, watch. And she goes, Who are you? And I look at her and then I go, Mr. Rao. And she goes, no, 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 Mr. Rao. No, I'm sorry. That was your speaking voice. Can you try again? Use your singing voice. Sorry. Who are you? Mr. Rao. No, 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 Mr. Rao. Sorry, kids. He made a mistake. That's your whisper voice. Can you use your singing voice? Okay, I'll try again. I'm trying again, kids. Okay. Who are you? Mr. Rao. And I just shine there. No, 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 no. That's it. He's doing that on purpose. And again, the, kid, the kids, because they know that it's not the right voice, they think it's funny. And so then, they, but they also see me doing it. They see me doing that process three different times. They see that she sings and that I respond with my name. Because ultimately, I don't want the owl to get to them and them not to know what to do. So I respond with my name, even though I'm not using my singing voice. So then I finally go, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, Snowy, I'll do it right. Who are you? And I say, Mr. Rao. Or maybe I'll go, Mr. Rao. But honestly, I'll probably sing a pie. 
and they go, oh, that's wonderful. Now, kids, if you sing your name to me, I will sing it back, and then I'll give you a high five. I might go, Mr. Ralph, high five. Or maybe I'll go, Mr. Ralph, fist bump. Or maybe I'll go, Mr. Ralph, head bump. And if you sing your name to me, maybe I'll even do this, Mr. Ralph, great big hug. And so then she goes around to each kid and she sings, who are you? And they sing their name like Brayden. And she goes, Brayden, high five. So she sings it back to them. And then, um, then she gives them a high five or a fist bump or a head bump, um, or she'll give them a great big hug. She only does like two great big hugs out of all the kindergartners. <laughs> But they love that one, so I think it's super, super fun. So um, Snowy the Owl is like a favorite in my classroom. She comes back when we're singing. She also sits up high and she can listen to the kids. She can listen to whatever we're doing. Sometimes if we do a song really well, the kids are like, can Snowy come out and we can sing it for Snowy. Snowy likes to come back throughout kindergarten and first grade. But um, they also love that Snowy is singing Peter's song because they know Peter gets really upset about that. Peter the rabbit who does the speaking voice. So they, they think that's hilarious. Um, if you want to see the, the whole process of how I do all four voices in different lessons, I did a video about that like a year ago, um, and I sort of processed through how I do Peter, the speaking voice, Flitter, the whisper voice, Snowy, the singing voice, and then Grizzly, uh, the shouting voice. So if you want to see that, I did a video about that. I think I did a blog post about it too, and you can, you can see that. I'll put a link to that in the notes. So eventually Snowy um, will fly back up to her perch. And if you have old CD spools, like for those uh, writable CDs, you know, that come in like a hundred, uh, these make great puppet stands. If you don't have like a puppet tree or something, um, these make great puppet stands. So she just goes back and sits right down. And actually the puppet, this puppet is sort of made to sit on her own anyway, um, but it, it does help to have that there because it, it puts a nice base on there. So she goes back and sits on her little bookshelf. And then before kids leave, um, this is the week where I'm introducing my goodbye song. And so I, I preview and say, you know, I'm gonna sing our lineup song. And let's see if you remember, boys, what line are you gonna go to? And they go to the green line. Girls, what line are you gonna go to? The blue line, great. But let me sing my song first because part of it is not in English. Part of it's in another language. I want you to just hear it first. So I sing it through one time. Um, and I sort of have modified the words since the last time I shared it, so it goes like this. Class is done, time has flown away, you must go. How I wish you could stay to sing and play all day. But when you come again, I'll be here waiting. I do because I, I have I sing it for them once so that they know what's coming I talk about how the first part is in Korean and um, we sort of talk just a tiny bit about that but we really don't have time and I tell them you know this time when I sing you need to listen and then go line up and the line that you know is yours because we've done this in the fourth week they know which line they're gonna go to so they go and do that and I say if you're talking while I'm singing I might just go like this and point to the end of line because you'd have to go to the end of line if you're talking or bothering someone else when we're lined up so then I sing, we line up, and then I just keep playing, and I might say, when your teacher shows up, you're gonna walk past, and you get to go right out, and go into the hall just as quiet as possibly can. The fun thing is, if you keep strumming on the ukulele, they will stay silent. If you stop, here waiting for you. Okay, now if you go out of the hall, if you stop playing, they will start talking. <laughs> so I just don't stop playing. In fact, I keep going until the last one is out of the room. And it is a quiet, simple transition into the hallway. And it's sort of magical. If you want the sheet music for that with the tabs, I think I put that on week six, but I'll, I'll um, copy the link down to week eight. If you if you want, in the, in the show notes, you can have um, a, a PDF version of that song if you want to use that for your own room. Um, so that's my kindergarten lesson for the week. Um, let me just quickly check through in these comments and questions. I love when you leave questions and comments. It really does help me know what's helpful and what's not. But also, if you have questions, I'd love to try and answer them or have. I love it when y'all answer each other's questions because it's, it's like we're hanging out together in a community and actually sharing. So um, thanks so much for leaving questions and comments. Um, Whitney said she does. she's trying Snowy. 
and you're doing the rabbit also and you like the puppets for four voices i love using the puppets for the well i just love using puppets but especially for the four voices because kids really really sink into that um linda says they do have a little thing i think it's a finger puppet owl you're right folk manis makes the hand you got to be careful when you're buying because they make hand puppets which are the big ones they make stage puppets which are like like a sock on your arm with a head on the top that's i think if you're behind like a puppet master or whatever and they make finger puppets um my trick for the finger puppet is if you're going to do like bluebird bluebird through my window and you have the little bluebird puppet if you put it on a mallet then instead of kids sticking their little gross fingers up into your puppet you you hand them this and they can hand the mallet to the next person or whatever so if you're going to have kids touching them put it on here but linda says they have the owl as a finger puppet so if you wanted to do an owlet you could <laughs> um let's see puppets of voices maya says yes love puppets of voices um linda we t i talked a little bit about tall man and how you can get kids from not uh, flipping each other off <laughs> so but mostly it's just tall man doesn't like to stand alone he waves because he's so friendly he's so friendly um one time i had kids a kid say if you do just your middle finger it means that you don't love god and i, I was like he just likes to be with his friend um i didn't want to get into that with the kids let's see uh, thanks for sharing. You're welcome, Jonathan. I'm happy to share. Um, Jeff and Randy. That book, seriously, this book is so good. As American as Apple Pie. I'll just say it again. You should go get it. It's so great. I'm not getting any money for saying that, but it's just really wonderful. Um, all the books. Yeah. So let me just reiterate. If you like the books from last week or like any of the books, I did do a whole blog post about um, books for movement exploration. There are six books and you can see inside the books and see how I use those. That's on my blog, makemomentsmatter.org. Uh, and you can just check in the blog. It should be the most recent blog post. Um, Anna says, this is your first time you caught the live video. Thanks so much, Anna, for watching. Um, and if you, if you, this is your first time or you've never seen this before, you can go into the archive and watch the last videos. This is week eight of doing this. So there are seven more videos if you're interested. Um, Oh, and Karen says for Folk Manus Puppets, be careful of the baby size puppets too. Yes. If it is cheaper, like around $10 or $15, it's probably the smaller one. <laughs> and it's worth it to get the bigger ones. Um, Holly says she uses an elephant puppet for shouting voice since you don't have a bear. That's awesome. I would love if you would take a picture and show me what it looks like because I have not yet to find an elephant puppet that I love. So Holly, I'll be expecting a picture <laughs> message from you in the next couple days. Well, thanks to everyone for sticking around. Um, I know on a Monday night, I appreciate you sticking around and watching this video. Um, if you want to go back or you missed the first half of the video, I'm going to post it in j uh, just a few seconds and it'll post live on my Facebook page. Um, and it'll also go in my archive and I'll put it on YouTube tomorrow um, so that you have that available. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the little comment section. I'll try and answer them. If you're on Instagram, all those questions sort of go away. So if you want to send me a direct message on Instagram by clicking the little um, paper airplane. Or if you want to email me at makemomentsmatter at gmail.com, feel free to do that so that then I can try and answer your questions or help you find a resource or whatever. Um, yeah, so uh, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave those questions or send me a message. I'd love to try and help out. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great week. See you next time.